while ago we put out a video from our church basement. No one wants to be in our church basement for long. But here we are, still. And we don't know how much longer we're going to be here. So I've been talking with people. I've noticed this shift. At first it was, okay, we're going to get through this. And now I'm hearing more of us getting warm. For some people it's hard to get motivated to do anything. No one's come into your house, and if they did, they couldn't get close enough to smell you anyway, so why bother? For some people, it's increasingly frustrating not to see loved ones, parents, grandkids. And there's fear about getting the virus, and there's sometimes even greater fear about if we had it, would we give it to somebody else and one of our loved ones? Some people are missing big life events. Some others, there's fear about losing business, and how long can you go without income? These things are real, and I think it hit me this week in a couple different ways. One, talking with people who are really struggling with this, and uh, um, a couple other things. One, a school is officially canceled, and, and we kind of knew it was coming, and, but it just hit like, oh, oh, here we are. And there are also this week glimmers of hope in Ohio that we're going to be reopening parts of um, parts of economy. At the same time, we're not going to be coming together as a church for at least another month. And um, that kind of hit this week too. I knew it was coming again, but just, oh, here we are. And that glimmer of hope that comes with some parts almost makes the waiting all that much harder. And I know we can say, well, at least we have. At least we have a roof over our heads, and, and family, and friends are healthy right now, and, and we have enough of what we need, and all those things are true and good to think about. But it's also okay and good to recognize what we're missing, what we're grieving, what's frustrating us, and what we fear. And in those times, for those of you who are in that place, the Psalms are a great place to go. You would think that God would only want songs about Him that are, yay, everything is awesome, and God is awesome. I mean, that'd be the best PR thing to do, but there's a lot of Psalms that don't say that at all. They're Psalms of pain and loss and wondering where God is. So I want to point out two today. Well, first is Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer me, O oh God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. Someone not only thinking about and wondering about the things going on, but is God even in the midst of this? Does he care at all? And also, uh, Psalm 137. By the waters of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There in the poplars we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord in this strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, and my right hand forget its skill. That psalm was written in a time when the whole community, the community of Israel, was in, was in exile in Babylon. And they were done. They had been carted away from their homes, and they were there longer than 70 years in a foreign land. How could they be expected to sing songs of joy in a strange land? Jill, uh, Jill Philippeck. That's the name. Jill, Jill Philippovic, who's a freelance writer in New York, says this. It's necessary to understand that missing the fullness of life, including pleasure and connection, doesn't make us selfish. Feeling destabilized and disoriented or pushed to a breaking point 
doesn't make us flaky or weak, it makes us human. And perverse as it may sound, she goes on, those of us who are anxious, frustrated, and disoriented can be grateful for that exact experience. In Dora's disoriented and disconnected time, this reaction is actually a rational one. It means we're warm. It means we love. I've been so encouraged in conversations that I have. The people are willing to share their frustrations and maybe a little more uh, apt to do it in these times. And that's healthy and that's good. And I think God wants us to be able to do that with each other and with Him. It's real and it can actually help us, I think, to deepen our relationship with God and with each other right now. So in this time, those of us who are frustrated, who are anxious, go to the Psalms, go to God, and go to each other. Reach out with those true feelings, those true things. We're still here, and we're still here together. Be real, be honest, and know that you are loved.